coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson, but I'm your host on Teaching with Board Games here today to do another special battle report for Urban Manhunt. Now, the author of Urban Manhunt, Cynthia Celeste Miller, had put a call out to ask for people to help play test some rules she has for what she's calling uh, gimmick matches. And one of the gimmick matches is going to be uh, known as a beast hunt. So these are special events where the hunters are taking a break, well, not really taking a break, from hunting criminals, because the criminals still will be there. But the, in the gimmick matches, there's going to be different victory conditions. In this case, this lovely creature, right, where's my finger, there, right there, is the beast that is being hunted. And for, because uh, of a fond friend of mine, I'm going to call her Natalia. So Natalia is the beast that's being hunted in this case. She's a large mutant and the crowd just wants to see Natalia just getting punished. Now Natalia will never die, but when the hunters put her down, that's the only way they're going to score points. So there are going to be criminals, there are going to be pods, but the only way the hunters are getting any points is by taking Natalia down. After Natalia goes down, she gets back up again, not as strong as she was before, so let's just take a quick look at the battlefield so you know what is going on here. So, so I'm taking advantage of the rules for the um, elevated, so the different placements for uh, tunnel, entry tunnels. So we have the one to two there, the three to four is down here, five to six, seven to eight is over there, and then nine to 10 is down here. So those are the entry points for the crims. So the crims are still going to be showing up. But now when setting up for this match, there's a couple things to keep in mind that would be a little bit different than your regular game of Urban Manhunt. One, a regular game of Urban Manhunt is usually about 10 control cards. This one is at least 12. So I'm doing the full 12 uh, for this one, not the full 12, I'm doing 12 because I don't wanna make the game too long. And the second thing is that you remove all the special criminals from the deck. So I've gone ahead and I've done those two things. Once you've placed all the things, oh, I guess the pods too. So there's one pod here. There's another pod here. And the third pod, I always love putting it in front of that opened um, storage container. And then we have the cat food Coliseum there. And it's just, it I went for a very urban look. This is some uh, terrain I bought for Starbreach but it works great in this game too. So I just thought I'd start showing this stuff off. So those are the locations of the pods and the tunnels where the criminals will be entering. Now, uh, let me take you to the setup for Pizzazz, see who our first players are. Oh, first off, the hunters. So our returning contestants are coming back for another round of Urban Manhunt. So we have Tennis Ball, Elasta Ape, and Glock Roach. Uh, Glock Roach really felt that he was hard done by last time because uh, he had two abilities. His momentum ability was exactly the same as one of his special rules. So I have modified that now. So Glock Roach now for his momentum ability now has evasive, which he says would have made all the difference. And it's true because for one momentum, he can now disengage from any combat and without taking any disengagement strikes, which is ultimately what put him down last time and knocked him out of the running. So he feels now that he stands a much better chance. And I think the televising companies tend to agree with him for agreeing to this match because uh, the previous champion, Elast Ape, is going to be at a huge disadvantage in this map because his fists are not very effective against armor and Natalia does have two armor. So that's gonna make it a little tougher for him, but we'll see, maybe the others can soften up Natalia a bit and then he can get in that uh, Final punch, take her down. But let's take you to the setup for seeing who goes first. Let's have a quick reminder about our contestants for today. The first contestant is our returning champion, Elasta Ape. Elasta Ape has a fight of five, a shoot of one, uh, defense of three, athletics four, mind of three, pizzazz of three. So, which gives him five wounds, and he has a height of two, which is you know pretty standard. Uh, his special rules: he's a hand-to-hand -hand combatant. Resilience with blunt uh, to blunt uh, attacks. He has charge and he's a natural climber, given the, both the fact that he's stretchy and a monkey. His momentum options are, of course, the reroll, lunging strike, where he can stretch his arm and attack from a further distance, and sprint. 
stretching those legs to their big advantage. He only has the one attack, which is his stretchy monkey punch, which has a two inch range, accuracy plus one, damage two. But now his attack is weak against armor, and this is going to be hard against Natalia. The, um, being the returning champion, maybe the broadcasters felt that he needed a bit more of a challenge, so they've given him a bit of a handicap on this one. So we'll see how he can do. Maybe he can let the others soften up Natalia first, and he can go in for the final blow. Then we have Tennis Bill. And Tennis Bill has a fight of four, shoot of five, defense of two, athletics three, mind one, pizzazz of four. He has four wounds, a height of two. He has three armor, so less wounds than Elasta eight, but that three armor certainly helps. Well-rounded, pun intended, level one, so he can upgrade one dice, and if it's a three plus, then he gains one momentum. Resilient to injury, so now if three plus, so if three plus of the of the um, dice are six plus in the attack, then he gains plus one momentum. Not that dice rolled as a three plus. He's resilient to injury, so when he gets an injury card, he can ignore and discard due to his robotic body. And ready to rock, level one. I forgot to write that down, but ready to rock means that he's starting the game with one momentum already at the beginning. Um, he has reroll, of course. Come out and play, which he can auto pass spot checks, which is going to be pretty useless in this one because the beast won't hide and he's not looking for those criminals. He has an arsenal, so he can ignore cards, which makes him lose an item because they're attached to him. And he's paid two extra points for this one. So this would only cost him one momentum, but again, nothing he's going to be using this game. So he has his basic robo punch, which he's not really using, but then he has his gun called the wild card. Has a 12 inch range, accuracy plus one, two damage. It's depletable. It's an item, ballistic, and a gun. Cover negation, so cover does not protect against the attack and extended ammo, so he begins automatically with a reload for the attack to begin with. Uh, but then again, cover um, may not play a huge thing in this because the beast is pretty mindless, not going to be seeking a lot of cover. And finally, we have Glockroach. So Glockroach has a fight of two, shoot of five, defense of four, athletics three, mind two, and pizzazz of three. Four wounds, two height. Glockroach is a hit bug, so when Glockroach eliminates a crim, you can move Glockroach up to four inches, ignoring any difficult terrain. Slip away when he's targeted by a ranged attack. You can move him four inches, ignoring difficult terrain. And I'll be back, not just in a rerun, upgrade two guys when making recovery checks. Now, this is the one, like I said, this is exactly the same as this one. So when eliminates a crim, when eliminates a crim, move them four inches, move them four inches. So it's exactly the same. So what I did is I just bought a new one here. So he's got his reroll arsenal, just like tennis ball has the, um, you can ignore effects, which deal with his things. He has so many guns. This one now, evasion, which uh, would have been perfect for him in the last game. So that's kind of what I thought was fitting for this. Uh, cost one momentum to use, and he can leave disengagement strikes. Uh, disengagements without, he, sorry, he can leave engagements without taking a disengagement strike. So yeah, again, very useful. So he's got his bug bomb. So the bug bomb, uh, totally armor piercing. So that's going to be really good against Natalia. Has a range of six inches, accuracy zero, and it's, it's a gas weapon. So he's throwing a can of raid at them. Limited ammo. So it's depleted when you impact dice rolls a one or a two. So those um, pods might come in more handy. Then his guns, called the Glockenspiel, 10 inch range, plus two accuracy, damage one, uh, rapid fire and armor piercing of one. Again, the armor piercing. So he's got a lot of armor piercing, very helpful against Natalia. So maybe he's going to be able to, I think this one is more suited to him. I think maybe this is the network's way of saying, sorry for the first one for shortchanging you. Let's give you a break. All right, so coming back to our list, uh, go with our returning champion here. So we're doing our pizzazz check to see who starts the game. So um, tennis, uh, sorry, last ape has a pizzazz of three. So we'll roll here, and he gets one pass. So he has one. Tennis bill has four, and he gets three passes and then Glock Roach has three and he gets no passes so it'll go in the order of tennis ball elastic ape and then Glock Roach so tennis ball getting first choice of where to start has chosen 
the what we'll call the southeast corner of the map down here. So he's taking this spot here. Wanting to deny Glockroach the opportunity to get up high in a sniping position, a very safe position, the last ape has opted to take this corner here in the northeast corner. And so he is going to make his way through there. And it's pretty free of, uh, it only has the 156 there too. So this is a good spot for him to make some forward progress. So Glockroach took up his position behind the Cat Food Coliseum here on the northwest corner of the map. Uh, he actually took it because it has the seven to eight. It has two things of crims there because when he eliminates crims, he's going to be able to move forward for free. So he's hoping to use that to kind of slingshot himself forward if he can and get into the action even quicker. So that is the setups for the hunters. Let's get to the match. Almost forgot, we need to set up the crims first too. Tennis ball gets the first choice of where to put a crim. He's choosing to put it here at 910. He just wants them out of the way. He wants a clear shot, being able to focus on getting into uh, Natalia. So he has pulled a pistol packing hoodlum who will then show up at that spot. The last eight chooses next. He draws a crooked lawyer. And he's going to put that crooked layer over here at number five and six because it's a little bit closer to tennis ball and he's hoping to just maybe tie tennis ball up a little bit. So we put down the crooked lawyer because we know nobody's more crooked of a lawyer than Harvey Dent. And finally, Glockroach, as I said, has the plan to try to slingshot himself forward, gives himself a cheap thug to work on. So the cheap thug comes here to number seven and eight. And those are your criminals set up and ready to take on the hunters while the hunters just want to get past them into the real prize of Natalia. We already know tennis ball is our uh, first player. So we're taking our first control card and the control card Um, well, we're not going to be restocking any pods. No event cards are drawn. And place two crims. We're not going to because there's already three criminals on the board, which is equal to the number of hunters. So we'll hold on to that for the criminal actions after the turn is done. So let's go on to the hunter's actions. So Tennis Ball is going to make some forward progress. I mean, he can't just do anything from back here. So he's going to have to run the first turn. He has an athletics of three. So rolling three dice for his movement. And he rolls three successes. So that is seven inches of movement. So Tennis Ball. I think Tennis Ball is going to run over for that structure here. Uh, if he can get onto the second floor, then he's going to be shielded from attacks from above for from the the tunnel that's up there, and also maybe just be able to stay away from the thing while while sniping at Natalia from that spot. So let's see how close he can get with that first movement of seven. So movement of seven puts tennis ball right up to there, and so nothing much more for it. Has to run again because there's. And we have two more successes. So he's going six more inches. Which will take him up right to the base of the ladder here. So a last ape also needs to get in there. So a last ape is going to run. And a last ape. Um, that cancels one success with the impact die. So two successes gives a last ape six inches of movement. So a last ape is just going to charge straight in. And we'll try that again. And that is three successes for a total of seven inches of movement. Last eight behind. Behind the stairs there. Last eight's gone in behind the stairs there. Sneaking up around towards the 
tell you. So Glockroach's gun only has a range of 10 inches. So Glockroach is not currently in range of the cheap thug. So Glockroach is going to have to move forward. So Glockroach has three dice for impact, uh, for athletics and rolled no successes. But the, so, um, but the impact dice was not a failure. So Glockroach still gets to move four inches forward, which is going to be enough anyway, really. I mean, it's just, it was hoping to get more distance than that. But now Glockroach is going to fire at the thug. So Glockroach is going to shoot at the cheap thug. The cheap thug has just emerged from the tunnel, so gets no cover, whereas Glockroach has an accuracy of plus two, so is hitting on fours or better. Glockroach is getting five shots, with a shot of five is rolling five dice. And the, the cheap thug has a defense of two. So Glockroach only needs two successes in order to successfully hit the cheap thug. So roll the dice. And we see that we have three successes. Three successes out of five, which is still a pretty poor roll, considering the plus two accuracy. Uh, so the, that's three, which, which exceeds the defense by one. So Glockroach's gun does one damage. It gets plus one for the exceeding of the defense. And Glockroach does two points of damage to the cheap thug. Doesn't eliminate him, as he was hoping, but does put two wounds onto him. Now that all the hunters have had a turn, it goes on to the criminal phase. Let's see what the crims are doing. So first off, um, crim actions. So we look at the demeanors. So if we'll look at the Cheap Thug first. The Cheap Thug has an aggressive demeanor. So aggressive is doing a two, which is charging. So after getting shot at, the Thug didn't like that so much. He's going to charge at Glockroach. The Crooked Lawyer is cowardly and cowardly is doing a one. So he's going to flee away from um, Tennis Ball, the only one he can see. And the Pistol Packing Hoodlum over here, just to give you a sense of where I'm looking at here. The pistol packing hoodlum is typical and typical is going to seek cover or flee. So let me just get a D10 here. I rolled a one. So that means that the pistol packing hoodlum is going to seek cover. So we'll do this because I'm already pointing at the hoodlum. The hoodlum's going to come and seek cover over here behind the crates. The lawyer was scared off by tennis ball over there. Is going to move directly away from tennis ball over this way. So come coming that way, unbeknownst to him, right towards Elasta Ape. So the cheap thug has charged in towards Glockroach, but hasn't quite made it. So he's in for a bit of trouble. Well, let's move his wounds with him too. He's at two. It'll take four to put him out of action. Let's take a moment to talk about the beast rules. So the current first player is always the one who moves the beast. And anything that um, moves the beast in any way, whether it's knockbacks or thrown, then the first player is making the call where it goes. The people... The beasts are not crims for any of the purposes of event cards, special rules, momentum, etc. Uh, beasts can be engaged with crims or hunters, but they don't try to engage the crims. They're trying to engage the hunters. Uh, beasts can leave engagement any time or not subject to disengagement strikes. Beasts are not affected by difficult terrain. Uh, the beast acts and ends at every crim phase immediately after the last crim acts. And when it's their turn to act, the first player rolls a d10 and consults the appropriate chart. The chart is whether the beast is engaged or not. So in this case, the first turn when the beast is not engaged, and nobody's going to make it to the beast this first turn, then the beast will do that chart. Hunters are attacked by beasts if the beasts, uh, as if the beasts are crims, as if the beast is a crim. So you never roll for the beast, you just roll for your hunters. So when they attack, they just do the regular attacks that way. When a beast is down, it doesn't act, it just gets up and there's rules for that which we'll see when that happens okay so looking here we're on the if the beast isn't engaged roll on beast action table two so you're rolling a d10 so the the beast is doing a four Oop. getting to focus there so it's a four so the beast is charging the beast moves up to six inches towards the nearest model and attacks if possible so looking here, so for the for the charge action, you can see 
Over here we have the pistol packing hoodlum over here uh, is a little bit closer to the beast than is tennis ball, but the beast will never treat the criminals as a target for a charge. They will always charge towards the hunters. So the closest hunter that um, can be seen by Natalia is tennis ball. So I'm going to move six inches towards tennis ball and ends up right here, which suits tennis ball just fine. That's exactly what tennis ball wanted was to um, get Natalia closer. So now can start opening up with some shots. So that is the end of turn one. We're going to move the first player token down to Elasta Ape, who will be the first player this turn. Take the control card. And the control card says that no pods are restocked, not that any have been touched. The first player draws one event card. We're placing crims, which we're not because they're all there. So there is an event card. So that is the important thing to note here. So I'll just put this one on top of the pile. And the event card says, double shot. Play this card after a crim makes a shoot check for an attack against a hunter. The crim immediately makes another shoot check against the same hunter using the same attack. Okay, so this is a keeper. So this one is kept by Elasta Ape for when somebody does shoot at them. Okay, so leading the turn will be Elasta Ape. Now I was kind of thinking, like what what's the point of having the crims and everything? There are no points, the pods aren't points, so but what the crims are going to provide is momentum and getting momentum is going to be helpful to do your special momentum abilities to just do those things that you need to do re-rolls etc so yeah i think i think the last day could just go barreling right in for natalia but i think instead he is going to take a moment here to take on um this this crooked lawyer so last ape has an athletics of four so i'm going to roll the four dice here and he gets one success so that success is going to put him at five inches now unfortunately he's not six inches away so he's not going to be well fortunately unfortunately because i mean he moves right in against the lawyer pops out there surprising him he gets a bonus to his damage when he charges and if the charge is more than six inches away so he's not getting that but he does have he is a hand-to-hand -hand combatant so he's going to be upgrading two of his dice and his fight is five so he gets one two three regular dice and then four or five upgraded to d12s needing six or higher and that's cocked so that's uh, one, two, three hits. The Crooked Lawyer has a defense of one. So that's two hits in excess of what he needed. His Stretchy Monkey Punch has a damage of two. Actually, his Stretchy Monkey Punch is also accuracy plus one. So he would be hitting on fives, but that doesn't make any difference here. So his thing does two damage and he's done uh, two hits in excess so he has two damage plus two damage more for exceeding the defense and wow okay so that is we're treating that as an additional hit so in rolling a 10 on the impact die for the damage he automatically is for starters gaining one point of momentum he is also then gets the option of gaining an additional point of momentum, treating this as two successes, which he doesn't need because it'll just, that would just give him more pizzazz for a, um, a spectacular kill, but he's not getting points for this anyway, so that's just a waste. He could flip over the top event card and carry it out at the end of the current phase or put it in his hand as a, if it's a keeper or upgrade up to two dice for the damage check if there was, but this is, this, is, this is the damage check. So he's just going to go for the extra momentum. So he's getting two momentum for this, uh, rolling the 10 and yeah, he's getting two momentum for rolling the 10. The Crooked Lawyer only has two wounds, so that eliminates this crim. 
So Elastiape is getting a total of three momentum for that. One for rolling the 10 on the impact die for the damage. Two for rolling the 10 on the impact die with the damage. He chose, you automatically get the momentum. He chose the second momentum as that option. And the third one just for eliminating that, uh, that lawyer. So that was a good turn for him. Three momentum for Elastiape. Next up, we have Glockroach. And Glockroach is going to... I think he's going to start off and try and put some distance between himself and this thug. He wants to just keep making movements over towards Natalia. So he is going to make a move first with his three athletics. Wow, so he got a 10 on the impact dice. That's two successes. So rolling a 10 on the impact die always gives him that point of momentum. So he's getting one point of momentum. He is um, treating it as two successes. So that's going to be three successes, uh, two, three, and then that's going to give him a total of seven inches of movement. So he is going to go seven inches straight up this way, keeping a line of sight on that thug. So now Glockroach is going to shoot at the thug. He has a shoot of five. He, the thug has a defense of two. So he is hitting on fours. He only needs two successes in order to hit. He has one, two, three successes here. No, four successes. That one misses, but the other four are all hits. So that's two in excess of what he needed. So his gun does one damage. One damage, but he's hit two in excess of what he needs. So he rolls two more dice for this and needing his regular six ups in order to hurt. And that's another momentum for him. And that's one, two, three. So he has killed the Krim. So that's going to be three more momentum for him as well. So just as Elastic Ape rolled a 10 for his damage, he's rolling a 10 for his uh, damage. So he's taking two, two momentum for that. Plus that uh, is three in excess of what he needs. So he's, he, he eliminated the criminal and he's getting three momentum for that kill. Well done, Glockroach. So when I draw a line of sight for tennis ball here to Natalia, the central structure here, this this uh, this black central structure, actually covers about half of Natalia. Plus, he's looking through here, so I would say that Natalia would receive cover, except for the fact that tennis ball's guns ignore all cover. He is targeting computers and everything, so he's ignoring all cover. And Natalia is definitely within range, so tennis ball is just going to open up with two sets of shots here against Natalia. So one thing we haven't discussed up until this point is Natalia's stats. She is a height of four. She has wounds of eight. Every time she's put down, however, so once she's knocked down and gets back up again, once she chumba wumbas, then she's going to be at seven the next time and then six the time after that and so on. It'll just get incrementally lower every time she gets knocked down and gets back up again because you're never going to keep her down. Uh, she has a fight of two, a shoot of two, defense of three, athletics two, and a mind of one. Her attack will be called the, the Crypto Claw. So the Crypto Claw has a range of two, accuracy plus zero, damage five. And uh, she also has armor of two. So Natalia is a bad piece of business. So, but we'll see what we can do with um, Tennis Ball here right now to put some put some damage onto her before the other hunters get in on this. So uh, Natalia, uh, so Tennis Ball is shooting at her. He has an accuracy of plus one with the wild card, which is the name of his gun. He has a five shoot, so he's needing fives to hit. And he has one momentum, which he started with, with the ready to rock. So if he needs a reroll, he's got it. So let's see what we get. So needing fives, he's got three, four hits here. The impact dice missed, but not a one. So four, so her defense is three, so he exceeded by one. So with four hits, um, he's getting damage of two plus two extra. Now the two extra I'm downgrading here because with the armor of two, you are downgrading two dice for Natalia. So although four dice are being rolled, two of them are downgraded to D8s instead of D10s. So they still need sixes to wound, and he does only one wound to her. So I've marked her with one wound, and now going on to the second attack. So he has the shoot of five. 
So rolling five dice, needing fives because he has the accuracy of plus one. And he's rolled one, two, three hits. The impact dice missed, but did not roll a one, so he's fine. So it's an excess of one. So he's rolling one, two, three dice, with two of them being downgraded. So he rolls and he gets one more wound onto Natalia. So she's down to six. So that is it for the hunters. We're on to the crim phase. So in the crim phase, we see that we just have the pistol packing hoodlum left. So let's see what the pistol packing hoodlum's doing. Typical demeanor. And a typical demeanor this turn is doing a number three. So they are going to seek cover or flee. So let's see what the hunt this, this crim is going to do. I'll just roll right here. And it's a six. So the criminal is going to um so to number three is going to just continue seeking cover. Now one thing I'm just remembering with Glockroach right now is that Glockroach's special ability, the hit bug ability that he has, whenever Glockroach eliminates a criminal, Glockroach may move up to four inches. So Glockroach eliminated that crim there. That was the whole point of doing that. So it comes over there. So this criminal can now see Glockroach, but so would have been able to see Glockroach's thing, but it's, it's out of range. The, the pistol packing on him only has a range of 10 inches. So is aware of Glockroach's presence now, but also still behind cover. So nothing would have changed for that criminal. On to turn three. So at the start of turn three, we see that Tennis Ball has one momentum. Elasta Ape has three and Glockroach has three. We move the token down here to show that Glockroach is the start starting player for this round. We get rid of the old card, control card, and now we bring out the new one. The new control card says, uh, pod one is restocked, but nobody's touched the pod yet. No events cards are drawn this turn, and you're placing only one criminal. So even though two criminals could be placed because two were eliminated, we're only placing one. So the one criminal being placed is another pistol packing hoodlum. And this one is going to space one. Has a nice sniping position. Unfortunately, I don't think that pistol is going to reach to the ground. <laughs> Almost forgot, we still have to do Natalia. Um, you have to get used to the, the third phase. You have the hunter phase, the crim phase, and then the beast phase. I keep forgetting the beast phase. Here we go. So number one is a stay put. The beast does nothing this interest this turn. Perhaps it's observing the area, decides on targets, or just picking its nose. So Glockroach is the first player, and Glockroach could use the athletics movement to sneak up on Natalia and start putting some bullets in there, but you know what? Six wounds, I don't think, I don't think that Glockroach is going to do six wounds worth of damage to her in one turn. I think he's going to be a little smarter about this and try to maybe just continue to build up his points and his momentums and things so that when the time's right, then he's going to, to strike. Because right now, Tennis Ball is pretty committed to Natalia because the, the proximity. But I think, so what uh, Glockroach is going to do Glockroach uh, uh, is going to move this way towards this pistol packing hoodlum here and see what he can do. So let's start off with the athletics roll. So we have one success. The impact dice is not the one, so we're okay there. So that is five inches of movement. So Glockroach just move them four inches to account for that one extra inch to move around. Now has range on this pistol packing hoodlum here. So even though there are two targets within 10 inches, um, Glockroach can only shoot at one of them because they're not within three inches of each other. So that's what uh, the rapid fire ability can do. So even though he's got multiple guns, it's only gonna work if they're closer. So he's going to take this thug right here. Sorry, this hoodlum. 
pardon me, I didn't mean to insult, insult all the thugs out there, calling this hoodlum a thug. This thug has cover, so Glockroach has five dice, one, two, three, four, and five. That's only four and five. Um, the, the hoodlum has a defense of two, and Glockroach has missed terribly. So that is, um, let's see. So that'd be one, two hits, except for that one is a one, so that takes away one hit. Oh yeah, I am going to reroll because that's going to mean that I'm running out of ammo, so I don't want to do that. So I'm going to put Glockroach's um, momentum down to two and reroll that one into a four. So it's, um, it's a hit, it's a hit now, but it's not um, gonna be affecting any of the ammo or anything like that. So Glockroach is okay there. And now Glockroach, because hit, no, nothing in excess of the defense needed, so only rolling the one dice for damage. And it's a nine, which is one point of damage on this hoodlum. And as hoodlums only have three wounds, down to two. So that is it for Glockroach. Tennis Ball is going to keep pressing the advantage here. Keep shooting at Natalia, who's probably wondering where all these bullets are coming from. And so it gets five dice, accuracy plus one, so hitting on fives. That is many hits. So that's four hits. So that's, Natalia has a defense of two, so that's an excess of two. So rolling two dice and then two more for the excess, but we're gonna downgrade two dice. So in the end we have four dice, two D10s, two D8s. So that's actually a very good roll. So tennis balls getting one momentum automatically for rolling the 10 on the impact die. Tennis ball is then doing one, two, three damage. Could do a fourth point of damage and is going to do just that. Doing a fourth point of damage, taking Natalia down to two. So using this 10, instead of giving himself a bonus momentum, is going to use that to just add one more point of damage to Natalia. So Natalia is now down to two wounds, courtesy of Tennis Ball, who's done all the damage so far. And next up, we do Tennis Ball again with his five dice. And this is much worse. So hits twice. So that is a hit because you defense of two. He needed fives. The impact dice missed. So you're deep downgrading two dice, but remember that the impact dice is never downgraded. So the damage is two. So we're going to downgrade two dice, but you can only downgrade, because there's only two dice, the, the impact dice is never downgraded. So there's only one D8 and the impact dice D10 and no more damage, which was very unfortunate for Tennis Ball because Natalia is getting wobbly. So Elasta Ape is in a bit of a bind here with Natalia only being down to two wounds now. It means, and then tennis ball is going first again next turn chances are excellent that he's going to get the first kill on natalia and that's not something he wants to let happen so he is going to he's going to burn a bunch of his momentum points here so he's going to start off using his sprint ability and the sprint ability says when he makes his so he's spending one of his three uh, points for that. Normally it's a two points for this one, but he paid the extra so that it's only cost one point. And he, this means any successful athletics rolls he makes are going to add two inches of movement instead of just one. So he's trying to get that extra burst of movement in here and he has an athletics of four. So he's got a couple more momentum points so hopefully he doesn't need to use them but we'll see and i'm just going to roll it right here so that is four extra inches of movement so that's going to be eight inches of movement that's not going to be enough so 
So if he, well, what he can do actually, what he's going to do is he's going to come over here. So eight inches only gets him to about there, unfortunately. So he's still well off, even with his stretchy punch, he wouldn't be able to reach Natalia from there. So he's going to then move again and hopefully what's going to happen, he's going to try and position himself in such a way that tennis ball is going to have to at least move once because the last time tennis ball shot, he didn't do any damage. So I guess that's the best that uh, Elasta Ape can hope for is to try and put tennis ball into a position where he has to move at least once in order to shoot Natalia and then there'll only be one shot. So it's an all or nothing as opposed to getting two shots and getting that, that extra chance. So that's that's the best that uh, Elasta Ape can hope for right now. So he will move again. And this move is going, that's, that's six inches of movement is probably just perfect. It puts him right out here. So he's waving his rubber arms at Natalia and hopefully that's gonna get her attention and draw her over and out of the line of sight of tennis ball. Not the best play in the world, but it's the only one he's got right now. So let's see what happens. Go on to the crim phase first. So the criminal phase is going to be pretty easy. We have two pistol packing hoodlums. We have the one up at the tower here and we have the other one down here. So those two are going to be doing exactly the same thing. So unless there's a, a roll off here, but so looking at it, our pistol packing hoodlums have a typical demeanor. So a typical demeanor, they're doing a one. So they're going to shoot. So they're going to be shooting. So this, I think they're actually, well, we'll take a look at the measurements, but this one is certainly going to be shooting at Glock Roach. And this one I think is probably going to take a, take a shot at Elasta Ape. Let me just take a measurement and get right back to you. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the first one up on the tower here. This one is shooting down at Elasta Ape. Elasta Ape is definitely closer than um, Glock Roach. So Elasta Ape has a defensive three. I'm going to allow a um, a point of cover because the angle that the crim is looking down at Elasta Ape, it is a bit cut off by the by the double set of balconies here. So that gives uh, Elasta Ape a defensive four. The pistol packing hoodlum has a shoot of two. So Elasta Ape just needs to get two successes in order to avoid this and he's rolled a, a nine, an eight. The impact dice is a three and a two. So, oh, that was a two. So he's made two successes, so he has successfully avoided being shot by that hoodlum. Glockroach is out in the open here, has no cover. Glockroach has a defense of four. So rolling the same number of dice and Glockroach rolled a 10. The 10 gives Glockroach another point of momentum and avoids all the damage. Now Glockroach also has the ability to slip away. When targeted by a ranged attack, move the model up to four inches ignoring uh, difficult terrain. So Glockroach is actually, was kind of hoping for that. So yeah, I think Glockroach is just gonna get out of the way here. Move in between those two structures there. There's a bridge in between underneath, so moving more towards Natalia. So the Crims have gone, the, the Hunters have gone, the Crims have gone, so it's on to Natalia now. Natalia is still unengaged. So she rolls another one. So she's standing there still just drooling and wondering what's going on, all these people rushing at her from all directions. She's not sure, not sure at all. So that's not what Elasta Ape wanted. Elasta Ape was really hoping to get her out of the way, but she instead has just chosen to stay put and just too confused by everything happening all around her. So on to the next phase. This is going to be turn four. Going into the fourth round now, we have a chance to see Tennis Ball pull ahead as Natalia is down to two wounds and, and Tennis Ball does have the first activation this turn. So here's the setup for the turn. So Tennis Ball is going first, then and Last Ape, finally Glockroach. 
uh, Tennis Ball and Elastape have two momentum points each. Glockroach has three. Let's see what the control card for the turn says. So no pods are restocked, that's fine. Nobody has taken any. Uh, first player draws one event card and replacing two crims. And we will be placing two crims because, actually no, we're only placing one crim because there are two crims on the board and there's always one crim per player. So let's see what we have. So first off, we'll draw the event card. Snow and ice, weather. So it's, I'll just read this out. It says, when a hunter takes a move action, their player must spend one momentum to make an athletics check, and even then, up to two dice are downgraded for the check. If momentum is not spent, the hunter taking the movement may only move four inches. Reduce all Crim's movement scores by two inches. The first player rolls a dice at the end of each turn to see if the snow and ice stops. On a one to three, remove this card from play. On a four to ten, it remains in play. So this is a remain in play card, so I'll just leave that there to remind us of this. Actually, I'll put it somewhere a little more visible. Put it up. Put it up on the uh, cat food coliseum there just to help remind me that it's in effect and then we're drawing one crim because we already have two crims in play and we have another crooked lawyer and that crooked lawyer is coming to spot seven which is back where glockroach had started tennis ball is going to attack now and forgetting here for tennis ball uh, for tennis ball short changing him is that he has the well-rounded ability so he can always upgrade one of his dice and if three of the dice are successes then he gains a momentum for that so he's rolling five dice because he has a shoot of five uh, no cover for natalia because he has he negates cover with his uh, wild card shot so he's rolling five dice one of which is, is upgraded and we roll and we have only two successes. So I'm not gonna re-roll the impact die because it's too, um, you know, it's a 50-50 chance. I'm, I'm going to leave that one. I'm not going to re-roll anything here. So he's hit anyway, because she has a defense of two. So he's hit. Um, and remember we're downgrading the dice, but we never downgrade the impact die. So we're rolling one D10 and a D8 and we get one success. So Natalia is down to one wound. So she's down to one wound and he's going to attack again. So one, two, three, four, five with the one upgraded. And he didn't gain a momentum for that one because he only rolled two successes. And with this, he's rolling four successes. So this is probably the end of Natalia right here. So four successes gains him one momentum. So he's up to three momentum now. And now he's going to, so that's, he needed two, so he's got his two. Two in excess means that two are, um, I'm rolling two extra dice, but remember two are downgraded. So he's rolling two D10 and two D8 for the damage, needing sixes. And, oh yeah, so he's, oh, six, six, Six. What kind of message are you sending here, tennis ball? So he's done it. He's knocked and tied down in excess of two. So he gets to roll for the the kill on this one, uh, for the pizzazz. So he has a pizzazz of four. So one, two, three, four. And he exceeded her wounds left by two. So he's rolling two extra dice. And he gets in one momentum for rolling a 10 on the impact die. So he's up to four momentum with that. And let's see. One, two. Um, I think he's going to count that as an extra success. So that's one, two, three, four. So four bonus points for taking down Natalia. So Natalia is down. And just rereading the rules here, it's not just for taking Natalia down that you get the points, you're getting three points for every wound you cause to her. So tennis ball did all eight wounds to her. So that's uh, eight times three is 24. And then he just got an extra one, two, three, four 
points, so he's up to 29 points. So he's taken a massive lead on everybody here. So a last ape, I'm not really sure what the last ape's going to do now, because at this point, Natalia is going to get up again. What is the point of moving? And that's my thing I'm seeing right now. Once, once you have Natalia in your sights, like why, or the beast rather, why do anything but just stand there and throw your attacks into it? Like I said, I guess you can go for crims to try and go for points, but uh, momentum points, but you're not getting points to win. So what's the deal? I mean, Tennis Ball was just very fortunate that Natalia ran right towards him. And so he got uh, to put all the shots into her. He got all the points. So let's, um, so t t uh, the last ape, what's he gonna do? Um, well, I think for starters, now, so the, the this, this snow and ice, how does this work again? So uh, he can make athletics checks. He's downgrading two of his dice for the check, okay? So he has an athletics of four. One, two, three, four. And he's downgrading two of those dice. So he's rolling two d10, two d8 and he gets one success so he is going to move five inches i think that should probably be enough yep so what he's going to do he's going to put himself in between tennis ball and natalia and um for his second action i think he's yeah, there's nothing else to do. So Glockroach has just witnessed the fall of Natalia. So he has line of sight to this pistol packing hoodlum here who's already started on. So he might as well try and finish off this job because it's momentum points. It'll give him some advantage later. So let's see what he can do. So Glockroach has plus two accuracy. So he's hitting on uh, fours. And the Cheap Thug is behind cover, so has it now a defense of three. So let's see how Glockroach does. Uh, so one, two, three, he is hit. Rolling for damage, it's only one damage and he just hit. So we're just rolling the one. And Glockroach does one more point of damage, put him to three. A pistol packing hoodlum only has three wounds, so he's eliminated this crim. So this one is gone. And Glockroach doesn't make any pizzazz rolls because this is just a crimp. But what he does do is he gets one momentum, putting him up to four for the kill. Plus he gets to add, activate his ability Hit Bug, where when he eliminates a crimp, he can move up to four inches. So what I think he's going to do is Glockroach is going to move one inch over to here and then three inches up. So he's climbed up on the thing there. It's just gives him a little bit more safety against Natalia. So that was his first activation. And for a second activation, he's simply going to move four inches up to the, to the balcony here so he can overlook Natalia. So now they all have line of sight on her. On to the crim phase. So we're looking here. So first we have the pistol packing hoodlum with a typical demeanor. So they're doing a number three. So seeking cover or fleeing. So this hoodlum is going to flee. Um, well, hard to flee. Okay, well I guess because where the hoodlum is, the closest one is Glockroach here. So to flee would take them right down towards Glockroach, unless they're just going to, I guess they could drop down the balcony here to that balcony going over the back and then they're just going to hide on the other side there. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say they're going to jump off the thing. I'll, I'll double check the rules and see if they do jump, but for now we're just going to move them down. 
Next up, we have the Crooked Lawyer, who is a Cowardly Demeanor. And Cowardly Demeanor is doing a number two. So seeking cover or hiding. I rolled a seven. So he's hiding. Going to find something to hide in. I think he's going to maybe just go and duck behind those uh, crates back there. Actually, what I've chosen to do is I put the lawyer right here, just to indicate that he's hiding inside that uh, shipping container. And finally, the beast turn. All Natalia can do this turn is she stands up again. She goes down to seven wounds. So she can die eventually, but it just takes a lot. So she goes to seven wounds this time and they knock her down again. She goes to six wounds, then five, then four, and eventually she goes down to zero. Then that's it, she stays dead. But we'll see if we can get her there. So we have Glockroach just under the on the other side of the bridge here. We have Elasta Ape right in front there, and then Tennis Ball over there. So we have all three of the hunters just ready to bear down and start delivering some damage to Natalia, try and catch up to Tennis Ball, who took that massive lead early. So for the start of round five, we move the token down here to show that the last ape is the first one to go. We have um, tennis ball with four points, four momentum points and 29 victory points. We have a last ape with two momentum points and um, Glockroach with four momentum points and a last ape and Glockroach currently have zero victory points. So for the control card for this turn, no pods restocked. First player draws one card and you're placing three crims. We're only placing one crim because of the fact that um, there's already two out there. So look at the crim card. We have a, a cheap thug and that cheap thug is going to number 10, which is right down here. Let's see what the event card is. The event card says, bland elimination. Play this card after a hunter makes an elimination, but before the elimination quality check is made, all the dice are downgraded for this check. So that's a keeper, another keeper for a last ape. I forgot to roll for the snow and ice last turn, so let's just quickly look at that. So on a one to three, it's gone. No, so the ice will stay for this turn. But Elasta Ape is the first one to go now and has Natalia right in front of him. Elasta Ape's going to just go to town with his super monkey, stretchy monkey punch. So Elasta Ape is going to start off, well, just do two things of fighting here. So he's a hand to hand combatant with a fight of five. So he has a fight of five. So there is five dice involved. But being a hand to hand combatant, he can upgrade up to two of his dice. So one and two of the dice are upgraded. Let's see how he does against her defense of two. And last ape has an accuracy of plus one with this. So he has two hits there. And so he's got his two hits. He can turn this into an extra hit, which may not be a bad idea because the, um, the armor of Natalia, he is, he is weak against armor. So it's going to be treated like a level three armor instead of level two. So he's automatically gaining one momentum for that, for rolling that 10 on the impact dice. And he has the two successes he needs. So I could re-roll some of those dice, but at this point with being downgraded, I'm just going to leave it. So this way we're actually minimizing the number of dice that are down, getting downgraded because you can only downgrade, if there's two dice, you can only downgrade one because one has to remain as the impact die. And roll him up and look at that. He's done two damage to Natalia. That will earn him six points. Then he'll go again. 
So one, two, three, four, five, with two of the dice being upgraded. And wow, he rolled another 10 on the impact die. So that is up to four momentum now. And he has one, two, three, four, five. So he has one miss here. So at this point, I'm going to spend one die for Last Ape. And he's going to re-roll this. This is the D12 too, so getting a five or higher is, is likely. There you go. So all five have landed. So he needed two. And he has three in excess. So those three are all going to be D8s. So he has three D8s because she's armor two, but he treats it like one extra because his he's weak against armor. So three D8s plus two. And I'm going to treat this 10 instead of, uh, I'm going to get a, uh, treat it as two successes. So he's getting three, so treating it like six successes. So um, three D10s and then three D8s. He just wants to try and do as much damage as he can right now. Really press this advantage. And so, yeah, those D10s have let him down. The, the D8s have let him down. All three of them were poor rolls. He has three dice that he can re-roll. And I think he's going to use one right now and re-roll that. This one, see if you can get another damage. No. Okay, so he's done two more damage to Natalia, putting her down to three wounds. Just pummeling her. So that puts him up to 12 points now. Slowly catching up to Tennis Ball. And now it's Glockroach's turn. Natalia is down to three wounds. Glockroach is hoping to be able to finish her off, which will then be a nice little payback to Tennis Ball for stealing the first kill. Uh, completely. This way, if N Glockroach can take Natalia down, then Gl Tennis Ball won't have anything to do this turn except maybe try and hunt down a Krim. So Glockroach is going to open up five, um, a five shooting trait versus Natalia's defense of two. Glockroach has plus two for accuracy with his Glockwunspiel. So needing fours to hit. So that is only one miss. And I think with four momentum, this is the moment that Glockroach has been waiting for. Glockroach is going to spend one momentum to re-roll this dice. There you go. Um, I'm going to re-roll again. I don't know which dice that was. There, okay, so they've all hit. And so now Glockroach's gun only does one damage. So we've done two and in excess of three. So that's going to be four dice. Now, two of those dice are being downgraded. So four dice, two of which are downgraded to D8s. And he's Look at that, the two D8s are the ones that landed it, um, taking Natalia down to one. Uh, could use more momentum here to try and re-roll some of those other ones, but really no point. I'd rather try and get Natalia out with a, with a big shot here and gain some more pizzazz for it. So shooting Natalia in the back, no honor amongst roaches. One, two, three, four, five. Unloading and uh, I'm going to use the momentum to reroll the impact die, and that's all hit. So Glockroach is now two momentum. So again, it's um, two were needed to hit, so in excess of three. So there's the three. And then these two dice, which are in excess, are downgraded because of Natalia's armor. So just needing one, anything in excess of that will be added for pizzazz points. And there's only one wound, but that's all that was needed. So Natalia is down again. 
And Glockroach is not going to spend any momentum rerolling any of those. So Glockroach has a three. And so it gets one more point for that. So Glockroach did a total of three damage, which gives him nine points, 10 points in total. So Tennis Ball uh, has nothing left to do now, really. There's no crims around him. There are no, and Natalia's down. So now he gets a sense of what it feels like to take all the fun, have all the fun taken away. So gonna make a run for it. Remember with the snow and ice, uh, still makes three successes for his athletics roll. So he's able to move seven inches. So Tennis Ball is going to go five inches that way and two inches that way. So right to my D10 here. And then we'll do it again. And goes five inches. I'm just getting a clear line on Natalia. Nobody's gonna stand in his way anymore. Now let's take a look at the criminal turn. So grab up my crims, look at the control card. So um, we're starting off with a cheap thug with an aggressive demeanor. So aggressive are doing one, which is charge. So who is the closest here is probably Elasta Ape. So we're going to move this crim. Now the crim's movement is reduced by two because of the snow and ice. So this cheap thug is just running over here towards Elasta Ape. Then we have the pistol packing hoodlum hiding up behind this, on the other side of this thing here, was starting to flee. And so the, the pistol packing hoodlum has a typical demeanor, is doing a two, which is shoot. Well, they have nothing that they can shoot at. So they are just going to seek cover, which is what they're doing. And then finally, we have the crooked lawyer who is cowardly. So a cowardly demeanor is doing a one, which is flee. But when they are already hiding, they're not going to flee. So he's just remaining hidden inside that shipping container. Pretty much what I would do. And then Natalia gets back up again. She chumbawambas. And she goes to six wounds now. So at the start of turn six, we're moving the first player token down here to show Glockroach is going first. So at the start of round six, Tennis Bill has four momentum points and 29 victory points. Elasta Ape has two momentum points and 12 victory points. And Glockroach has two momentum points and 10 victory points. But Glockroach is starting the round and has a clear shot against Natalia. So we'll see what happens this turn. Probably just going to be a, a total curb stomping ad nauseum here, but we'll, we shall see. Let's look at the control card. So control card, we're just really looking for the events because we can't place any crims and when no, no pods have been opened. So the first player draws two event cards. Okay, so the first one is called unusable scrap. So this card says, play this card when a hunter picks up an object marker, that object has no effect and its source was, if the source was a card, the card is discarded. This is a keeper for Glockroach. And then the second one, good fortune. Until the end of this turn, the first player's impact die counts as rolling a 10 if it rolls a nine or a 10. Nice. So uh, that's for you, Glockroach. So here now we have Glockroach lining up for a next round of shots. So we have four and the impact die makes five. Hitting on fours. And so that's three hits. Three hits, two ones, and Glockroach has two momentum points. Uh, I'm going to use both momentum points there and re-roll those two into one more hit. So that's four hits. So that's um, down, two are downgraded. 
So damage is only one. So two are downgraded to D8s. So it'll be these dice to do damage to Natalia. And we have a nine counts as, because of the luck, counts as one momentum point. I'm going to treat that as two successes to do two points of damage to Natalia, taking her down to four. And that's six more points for Glockroach. Taking him to 16. Second shot. One, two, three, four, and five. Uh, that's four hits. And why not? We'll reroll that one. So that's five hits. So five hits. So three and two down. Um, sorry. So five hits is needed two. So that's three in excess. So it should be four dice in total. So. And that's another 10. We'll treat that as two more successes again. We'll reroll this 10 with my last momentum point to make that another 10. So that's three points of damage taking Natalia down to one. Unfortunately, was not able to finish her off with Glockroach, but taking as many points as he can. So that puts Glockroach up now to 25 points and gains one momentum again for rolling another 10 on the impact. So 20, Five points for Glock Roach. So catching up. And Natalia's almost down again. Now it's Tennis Ball's turn. Poor Tennis Ball though only has the option of attacking once, really. I mean, well, he's going to attack, but probably going to take Natalia on the first shot here. So three, four, five with the wild card is, ooh, rolled a one on the impact die. So we're going to use one of the Four momentum points to re-roll that. So that's now a three momentum points. We're gonna re-roll that one. There we go. With an accuracy of one. Only hits twice. Only hits twice. Not going to re-roll anymore, so it's going to be two damage for the, the wild card. So we're only downgrading one dice because you always keep the impact dice as a D10. And that's it. Boom. Took her down. So Natalia is down again. And He's, you know, this he's going for his possess, but uh, this is where. So he's got a four possess, and this is where Elasta Ape is going to play bland elimination. So all dice are downgraded for the check. So one, two, three, and four. There we go. So all the dice are downgraded for this check. And so he only gets one success there. So it's plus one point. So he's getting four points for that uh, putting down of Natalia. And finally, it's Elasta Ape's turn. Elasta Ape is just going to kick the kick a stone with his toe and look at his watch, wait for Natalia to get back up. Really, there's no point in doing anything else here because it's if this is the only source of points. So we go into the control phase now. So let's look at the first one. The, the Cheap Thug and the Aggressive Demeanor is doing a two, which is charging. The Snow and Ice is still in effect. So this guy is going to charge four inches towards uh, Elasta Ape. Which will put him just right over here. And then we have the pistol packing hoodlum, who's a typical demeanor. Typical demeanors are doing a three, which is seeking cover or fleeing. So let's, yeah, I'm just gonna say they're seeking cover because again, that pistol packing hoodlum is kind of trapped up in here. To come down the ladder, they can't flee past Glockroach when that's the only way down. So they're, they're safest there. So they're just gonna stay there. And then the Crooked Lawyer is a Cowardly Demeanor. And Cowardly Demeanor 
is doing a one, which is fleeing. So when somebody's hiding like that, they hide for a few turns first. So the, the, the crooked lawyer is actually just going to stay hidden in there. Um, yeah, nothing more for him to do. Last thing to do for the turn, we're going to roll to see if that snow and ice ends. Let me grab the impact die and nine. No, on a one to three, it ends. Four to ten, it stays. So it remains in play. So these are our criminals in play right now. We have Tennis Bill with three momentum points and 33 victory points. We have Elasta Ape with two momentum points and 12 victory points. And we have Glock Roach with one momentum point and 25 victory points. Last thing to happen, of course, during that last phase after the crims was Natalia stands up and she's now at five wounds. But she can do nothing else, so. Tennis Bill is starting the round. So we'll draw the control card. Oh, that's a crim card. Control card says, no event cards are drawn. I'm not gonna worry about pods or crims because those are all full. So no event cards for tennis ball. Uh, the, the fortune has ended for um, Glockroach. It did pay off for him though. I was able to help him out a little bit. So tennis ball is hitting on fives, going to just Open up with that gun, the wild card, into Natalia. So he is going to hit, needing fives. So he has four successes. Uh, might as well use one of his three momentum points to reroll this. And oh no, it's a one. That's no good. So what that's going to do is that's going to eliminate one of the successes. So he still has three successes and he needed two so it's one in excess so he's doing his two damage plus one more but the two of the dice are downgraded because of natalia's armor so that is no damage actually yeah and even a one there oh and he rolled a one for the thing so that he has a free, he has he starts with a reload because that would mean he's out of ammo but he's um he's got a, a built-in reload so he's 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 good but yeah, that was that was a terrible roll for him. Okay, so let's just double check in the rules there, and it does not require an action for tennis ball to reload. It happens automatically. So he had the one free reload built into his system, I guess stored up inside that giant ball of a body. Uh, so he's going to get a, another round of shooting here against Natalia. So one, two, three, four, and five. Hopefully this one goes a little better for him, and it looks like it certainly does. So he's got a bunch of hits here, needing a five, and he's going to use another momentum to reroll this one. So he's got five hits. So let me just move this down to one. So he's down to one momentum now. He's got five hits, so he needed two. So three are in excess. Two are being downgraded because of the uh, armor. So he's rolling three D10 and two D5. And so everybody says, only two damage. Um, you know, he's just going to take that. So she goes down to four. And he is not going to re-roll, use his last momentum to re-roll any of that. So two damage gives him six more points. So Natalia is now down to four wounds. And the last ape is getting ready to punch her in the butt. So remember, he's upgrading two dice because he's a hand-to-hand -hand combat master. So he's rolled, and he's plus one to hit. So those are four hits, needing two. So that's two in excess. His damage for his stretchy monkey punch is two. So he is downgrading three of the dice because of the um, his weakness to armor. So three dice are downgraded plus the D10 for the impact die. He has two momentum points here. That's unfortunate. Uh, he's just going to accept that. Not going to try to reroll any of those. 
just go you'd rather save it for a better attack so one two three four five round of attacking whoops so he has four successes now and at this point I think he's going to use one momentum to re-roll this one just needs a five or higher and he gets another 10 but not on the impact dice but that's still five successes so three are being downgraded uh, he does two damage normally so five successes so he's in excess of three so it's 2d10 and then 3d8 and He's got two successes. And he's gonna use his last momentum point to re-roll. He's gonna take a chance and re-roll the D10, this one. Oh, what a good roll. So he's got, he got a 10 on the impact dice. Took a, took a big gamble there, because it could have gone the other way and been a one. But now, that counts as, he gets the momentum for that. So that's three successes. He's counted as a fourth success to actually take down Natalia again. So Natalia's down again. And so he gets his pizzazz roll on top of that. So that's four damage is 12 points, puts him to 24. And three pizzazz. Adds another point, so he's up to 25. So just a flurry of punches, both to the butt and the back of the head has dropped Natalia one more time. Okay, we're getting to the situation now where it seems the first two hunters will take down Natalia and leaving the third hunter with nothing to do. Uh, but Glockroach has something he can do, which is try and take down that cheap thug who's running at Elast Ape. Not that he wants to save Elast Ape, but just that he wants to maybe get some momentum points and stuff for it. So he is going to start off by moving. So he is downgrading his dice because of the snow and ice. So it's, uh, well, he's got two successes there. Roll the two eights. So he can move a total of six inches. Let me just measure this out and I'll show you where he's gone. So Glockroach is moving right up into there because the last ape's closer. So even if Natalia is able to stand up and do something, which is looking very unlikely at this point, it's, yeah, he's, there's other people who will take the hit before he does. So he's just going to shoot now the crim from here so he's got five dice one two three and four and five so plus two accuracy he's hitting on fours so he's got four successes nine four four that was a four eight he rolled a one but not on the impact die so he's okay so that's four successes the cheap thug has a cover of a defense of two. He's not in cover, so it's an excess of two. So he's done two extra, so he's rolling all four dice for the damage, because he only does one damage with this Glockwind Spiel. And that is two successes. The cheap thug has four wounds, so he is injured control card for the hunters or for the criminals so we'll start off with the cheap thug who's an aggressive demeanor aggressive is doing one which is charge so he's going to continue to charge at the closest which is a last ape and i think at this point what he's going to do is he's going to move around this fallen pillar here just to give himself some cover as he tries to close in with a last ape he ends up over there next up we have the crooked lawyer Who's cowardly? Cowardly demeanor is doing a two. Uh, seek cover or hide. So he's going to continue hiding um, in his spot. I'll have to see again how many turns he hides for. This is his third turn. And then we have the pistol packing hoodlum, who is a typical demeanor. So two is going to shoot. Okay, so this criminal's making a shoot action, but when they're unable to make a shoot action due to certain circumstances, then they're supposed to seek cover. Uh, already in cover, 
but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the crim come around to this side just to put a, a line of sight onto um, Glock Roach. Still has cover from the balcony, but at least now we'll be able to make some shots towards Glock Roach. Of course, poor Natalia stands up at five wounds now. She chumba wumbas one more time at five wounds. Move the first player token down to Elasta Ape. We start off the round. Tennis Ball has one momentum and 39 victory points. Elasta Ape has one momentum and 25 victory points. And Glock Roach has one momentum and 25 victory points. Look at the control card. We have all three of our criminals. So no more criminals are coming out. So really, and we know pods have been taken. So it's really just looking to see if there's any event cards. So event cards, first player take, draws three event cards, mamma mia. First off, let's just roll to see if that snow and ice ended. One to three, it ends, not on a four. So four to 10, it stays. Okay, so three event cards. One, two, three. All right, the first one, small pistol. The first player places an object marker anywhere on the zone as long as it's at least 10 inches away from any hunter. Going counterclockwise, each hunter, each player may move the marker a further four inches. When a hunter model touches the object marker, place the card in that hunter's data slate is considered to have a small pistol, blah, blah, blah. So it remains in play. So I will set that up in a moment. Overwhelmed Crim. Play this card when a Crim is activated, but before an action is carried out, the Crim will take no action this turn and suffers a minus one defense until the Crim is activated next. This is a Keeper card, and it stays with Elastate for him to use. And Confused Crim. Play at the beginning of the Crim phase. Choose a Crim. That Crim doesn't take an action this turn. So Confused and Overwhelmed Criminals. Nice. Now before, Tennis Ball had some reduced visibility to... Natalia, which is why I was saying that uh, Elasta Ape could block the line of sight. But now, Natalia is a size four, so I don't think there's really any way that he can stand in front of Tennis Ball and block line of sight anymore, uh, the way you think about it. But even still, you know, if he doesn't take down Natalia in one shot, then Glockroach will. So at this point, it's just throw everything you have into Natalia and hopefully you can hit her enough to take gain some points from it. So, having said that, let's get punching. So, Monkey Punch is three dice with two upgraded because he's a hand to hand combatant. Needing fives because he has accuracy of plus one with the stretchy Monkey Punch. And that is only two hits. He has one momentum, but I think he's just going to do like he did before. No sense in trying to save a terrible roll like this. Let's just go with that. So two hits is what he needed. Uh, and he does two damage with his stretchy monkey punch. Uh, you would normally downgrade three dice, but as I say, you never downgrade the impact dice. So, And he did nothing at all. Okay, so just that was a waste. Uh, three, five. Here we go for a second round, and this does a little so this one does a little bit better. This is doing one, two, three hits, so in excess of one. So he's doing three damage, so two are downgraded because of the armor, but the third would be downgraded, but you don't downgrade the impact dice. And that's two damage, two sixes and a four. So he get six more points for that, putting him up to 31 points. So Glockroach is going to open fire on Natalia. Uh, he has um, five dice needing fours with the plus two and rolls not too bad. Three hits, so in excess of one. Only does one damage, so two d8s and a d10. 
could actually finish her right here with a good roll, and that is not the good roll he needed, but it does one damage for three points. Taking the dive down to two. Really needs to finish her off here to prevent Tennis Ball from getting any more points. Uh, let's see, so that's five dice. And gets four more hits, so that's an excess of two. So, um, excess, the two in excess does one damage. Is a total of three dice. So three dice, that's that's it. We've done it. It's um, seven and a six is the two last two that Natalia needed. Natalia is down again. So she'll be going to four points. I'm just going to put the four next to her now. And that's uh, uh, three damage. That's nine more points for Glockroach, putting him up to 34. So they're creeping up on Tennis Ball, who had that commanding lead. And yeah, Tennis Ball is just going to sulk. Tennis ball is going to take the turn off because, again, nothing really to do when your only source of points is down. Actually, not entirely true. We could do what um, can do what Glockroach did last time. What's the range on the wild card? The wild card can shoot twelve inches. I don't think. No, he doesn't have the range to go up to the, the, the come up there. But what he's going to do, so it's still snow and ice, so an athletics of three, downgrading all the dice. He just moves his four. And he's going to come out to here. And take a shot at that crim over there. So he's got one, two, three, four, and I'm not going to forget that well-rounded. I've really been shortchanging uh, tennis ball here. Um, so he's, yeah, he's got all hits. I think it's pretty safe just to eliminate this crim here. Too bad he's not playing the actual Urban Man. I need to be getting lots of uh, pizzazz points for this one. So that is um, they have a defense of two, so it's an excess of three. So two in excess of three. And, oh uh, yeah, so that crim is well and truly pasted. So that one is gone, and he gains a momentum for killing that crim. So let's look at the control card then for the criminal phase. We have the pistol packing hoodlum first with a typical demeanor is doing number three, which is going to be seek cover or flee. So let's see what they do. Looking down, Glockroach just taking down Natalia maybe has shaken the resolve here. So seek cover, already seeking cover. So they are good where they are. Next, we have the crooked lawyer. Crooked lawyer is going to, oh, sorry, what am I rolling for? Crooked Lawyer is Cowardly. Cowardly is three, is going to charge or flee, and I rolled a two. They're charging. They're, they, they just can't take any more. The stress is broken. And just can't take any more. Would rather die fighting than die hiding. So the Crooked Lawyer comes running out of the storage container towards Glockroach. And now Natalia stands up again. Now at four wounds, ready to take another round of battering at the hands of the hunters. Really not seeing much of her actions because she spent one turn running towards tennis ball, two turns picking her nose, then every other turn just picking herself off off the floor. Okay, so for the start of turn nine, we are moving the first player token down to Glockroach. We are uh, looking at the points. We have two momentum points for tennis ball, and he has 39 points in total, victory points. The last ape has one momentum point and 31 victory points, and Glockroach has one momentum point and 34 victory points. So it's actually coming a, quite a close match here. With, uh, it looked like Tennis Ball had an insurmountable lead at the beginning, but it's all coming around. So look at the control card. So pod two is restocked, we don't care. Player draws one revent card and two crims. Well, we're only gonna put one crim down because there's only one hunter. So the event, so let's just do the crim card first. So we have a, where are you? Where's my, there we go. Sneaky thief. 
So sneaky thief. Point number seven. And number seven is up there where the lawyer came out of. Let's have a look at the event card. The event card is a landmine. So it's a trap. The first player's hunters suffer four wounds, but that amount may be lessened or even eliminated. They must make an athletics check. Each success decreases the number of wounds taken by one. Each level of armor the hunter has will increase their athletics by one for this check. All right, so Glockroach just stepped on a landmine. So Glockroach has an athletics of three and rolled a 10 on the impact die for two successes. So it was taking four wounds, so ends up taking two wounds. So he's down to two health. That's fine, really nothing. I guess he could get shot by that crim up there, but uh, it doesn't, doesn't often happen. And I also forgot too, we forgot to put down the, the small pistol. So I don't think anybody really cares. So I'm just going to put the small pistol um, just back here uh, behind this this crate. It's, it's far enough away from the hunters and nobody cares to move. Nobody's, nobody's going to go after that pistol. We're all just too focused on Natalia. There it is. Let's get on with the turn. So Glockroach is going to need some pretty fine rolls here in order to take down Natalia in one turn. That's his hope though because you know we want to deny tennis ball as many points as we can because tennis ball is in the lead so clockroach gets the five dice two three four five roll it up and gets one two three four hits um you know what use the momentum for the last dice for five hits so down to zero momentum Five hits though, so it does one damage. Uh, so it needed two, so in excess of three. So two of those dice are getting downgraded to d8s. So we're rolling two d10s and two d8s. And does two damage. Now I'm tempted to use the bug bomb to ignore all the armor. Now downgrading the dice, the thing is that the bug bomb is not accurate, so. If I roll it, one, two, three, four, five, I need sixes. I'm sure I could do it. Where's that other dice gone? Okay, that's, that's hidden in there, that's a five. But we have nine, eight, nine, seven. So he's got four hits there. So that's an excess of two. So he's rolling three dice for the bug bomb. Now the nice thing about the bug bomb being a gas weapon, it, it does it ignores all armor on Natalia. So it just needs to roll six or higher. And there's three, so an excess of one. So he's got a pizzazz check for that. So the bug bomb, and the, the bug bomb also is a limited supply. So it, it uh, runs out on a one or two on the impact dice, but that didn't happen. So um, kill Natalia again. The pizzazz roll says only one more. So that was uh, 4, 12, uh, 13 points. So he's up to 47. So now that Natalia's down again, um, really tennis ball doesn't have much to do except move. And he's, he's, he's not even going to, he's just going to move four inches over to there and shoot at that thug up there. Not even bother rolling for the athletics because there's no point. He can move the four he needs. So it's five dice, ignoring the thug's cover. So that's uh, five and upgrading one because I'm remembering well-rounded once. And he, he has two momentum points. So he's going to re-roll this one because he doesn't want to run out of ammo again. That would suck. So that's um, two hits, which is all he needed for the, for the pistol packing hoodlum has a defense of two. So that's a hit, mm, excess of nothing. So uh, that's two damage to the hoodlum. The pistol packing hoodlum has three wounds, so still alive. So we'll go again, one, two, three, four, five. Upgrade one of the dice and 
We are hitting on five, so we have two hits. So again, that's all we needed. Doing two damage. And that's in excess of one, so the pistol pack and hoodlum was gunned down by Tennis Ball. Almost like Tennis Ball was trying to save Glock Roach, but no, not really. So that gives Tennis Ball one more momentum. So poor Elasta Ape is just left here to do nothing but scratch his butt and fling feces at the other two hunters, because really there's no point in trying to... I could you know, go, go hunt down that pistol, but what for? His monkey punch is better. So on to the crim phase. So looking at the crim phase then, we have, uh, we start off with the crooked lawyer who's cowardly is doing a number three, which is charge or flee. And they're choosing to continue to charge. So they are going to run more at them. And let's just see what the sneaky thief is doing first, but I'll move them all at once. So sneaky thief is also cowardly. So three seeking cover or hiding. So they are going to three seek cover. So they're going to seek cover behind maybe those crates over there. So the sneaky thief is going to move back here, hide behind this thing. And undeterred by the fact that Glockroach just stepped on a landmine, maybe knew that Glockroach was going to step on the landmine, and that's why I feel safer now because they're all gone. But anyway, so the the lawyer is running out there to take on all three hunters and Natalia. I thought lawyers are supposed to be smart. And finally Natalia stands up, three wounds remaining. Start of turn 10, we're moving the first player token up to Tennis Ball. Tennis Ball starting the turn with two momentum points and 39 victory points. Elasta Ape has one momentum point and 20, 31 victory points. And Glockroach has taken the lead, has one momentum point and 47 victory points. We currently have two crims on the board. We have the Sneaky Thief and the Crooked Lawyer, so there could be another one. Let's see what happens with the control card. Control card says, each player draws one event card, discard non-keeper cards and you're placing one crim. Okay, so placing one crim. So we're placing a, another Crooked Lawyer. And this lawyer is going to number four. So if this lawyer is smart, they will just enjoy the view and not get mixed up in what's going on down there. Okay, so I've drawn three event cards here. The first one is going to Tennis Ball. Tennis Ball gets, got the drop on you. Play this card when another player announces that their hunter is taking a fight action against a crim. So, or I guess the beast. The attack is negated and the crim is moved into base-to-base -base contact with the hunter. The crim then takes an out-of-sequence fight check against the hunter using any one of the melee attacks listed on the crim card that you choose. So it's a keeper card. So I guess I should look at that first. It's keepable. Uh, now it's Elast Ape. Elast Ape is a keeper card. This is called Burst of Speed. Play this card when a hunter takes a move action, but before the athletics check is made, the hunter gains plus two athletics for this check. Oh, and that reminds me, I need to check to see if the thing is gone. Elast Ape's got quite a collection of uh, keeper cards there. And now it's Glockroach. Glockroach is, is a keeper. And it's called That's Gonna Leave a Mark. Play this after a crim or hunter gains one or more wound tokens. That crim or hunter receives an unpreventable wound token in addition to those already received. So this could uh, look bad for Elast Ape if they gang up on him, which they probably will. So Tennis Ball is going to shoot at Natalia. Natalia only has three wounds left. So at this point, it's just try to get her down as quickly as you can. So rolling four dice plus one upgraded dice. And I lost one underneath the structure here. So that is nine. So he's rolled all successes. So that gives him one momentum. So puts him up to three momentum. And he has damage of two. So, and it's, it's uh, two is needed. So it's an excess of three. Damage of two. And two dice are downgraded for the armor. 
So we're rolling this. Could then take Natalia out one shot here. And he's got eight, seven. So that's two damage there. You know what? He'll use a momentum. Reroll this one. No. So it's only two damage. So she's down to one. I thought maybe could use the second attack to, to shoot the, the, the crooked lawyer. So back down to two momentum. And then shooting Natalia again. Two, three, uh, four, and five. With one upgraded. Well-rounded. Now that's a, an extra momentum. So he's up to three momentum now. Uh, it's one, two, two hits. And he's going to take that as a third hit. So let's just pretend that's a third hit. Take that dice out. So it's an excessive one. So he's doing two damage plus one more. So he's doing three. So two dice are downgraded for the armor. So he's rolling a D10 and two D8s. Just needs one success here to take the tally down. And he's got another momentum. So that puts him up to four momentum now and one more. So, and he'll treat that as an extra success. So that's one, two, three. So it's two in excess. So his pizzazz is four. One, two, three, four, two in excess. One, two, four kill points. Uh, that's one, two, three additional. So he did uh, four damages, 12 points. One, two, three, 15 points altogether for taking Natalia down again. Before I go ahead with the last ape's turn, I forgot to roll for the snow and ice last turn, so it's still around. The last ape could go after the lawyer or whatever, but then that's just putting him out of distance of Natalia. Just going to skip his turn. Glock Roach will turn around and blast that lawyer. The lawyer has no cover from there, that point. Um, Glock Roach is needing fours to hit. Uh, that's another momentum. And I will take those two momentum. So that's one, two, three, four hits. Four hits against the lawyer. They have a defense of one, so it's an excess of three. So I'm rolling four dice for damage. And that's only one damage. Lawyers have two wounds. So Grouch is up to three momentum now. Um, yeah, what else is he going to do? Got nothing else to do right now. He's just going to take another shot. One, two, three, four, and five. And that's uh, one, two, three, four hits in excess of three. So it's four dice. And that is one dead lawyer. No pizzazz points for a spectacular kill. And that is it. Another momentum. So that puts Glockroach up to four momentum now. Okay, so we have two cowardly demeanors, and they're going to be doing number one, which is flee and hide. So that over here, that Krim is going to hide inside that storage container. Whereas this lawyer up here is going to try to get away from this combat, which is pretty sensible. And Natalia stands up, three wounds left now. And let's roll to see if that snow and ice ends. Nope, snow and ice is still in effect. Next round, we're advancing first player token to Elasta Ape. And starting the turn, Tennis Ball has four momentum and 44 points. Elasta Ape has one momentum and 31 points. And Glock Roach has four momentum and 46 points. Take the next. There's one more card after this, and the game could end. Let's see, so it uh, nope, never touched the pods. First player draws two event cards and replacing two crims, but we only have one crim to place. So we have the sneaky thief, the crooked lawyer, and now we have a pistol packing hoodlum. The pistol packing hoodlum will appear at 10. 
which is right here. So Last Ape is drawing two event cards. So the first card remains in play. It's an injury. The first player's hunter downgrades two of their dice for all athletics checks. This card is removed when the hunter takes two rest actions. These rest actions don't have to be taken during the same activation. Okay, well, he's twisted his rubber ankle, which is weird when you think about it, but he doesn't need to go anywhere. Next is reposition. The first player may move their hunter up to four inches, ignoring difficult terrain. Ignore if the hunter is engaged. Okay, so he can reposition if he wants to. I guess this is repositioning that twisted his ankle. Uh, I think he's good where he is, so we'll just ignore those. Last day, he's using the stretchy monkey punch. Getting a lot of hits. We'll use the one momentum to reroll this. Might as well go for some more damage. There we go. So everything hits. So the stretchy monkey punch does two damage. So it's that's five hits. It needed, so it's an excess of three. So all three of those dice are being downgraded. One, two, three are being downgraded, but then two are left as D10s. So that's one, two, three. He took down Natalia with the first punch. So that's nine points for him, putting him up to 40 points. And he will be able to do some pizzazz with that. See how spectacular it was. Was it a stretchy chokehold? Pizzazz a three. Ooh, yeah, look at that. A 10, a seven, and a six. So he gets one momentum back for doing that. So he's back up to one momentum. And that counts as three successes. I can get those four successes, putting up to 44 points. That's not a bad idea. I think that's what he's going to do. So he's going to go to 44, which puts him tied with with tennis ball and just behind Glockroach. I don't think that Glockroach has anything meaningful to do, so we're going to go right on to tennis ball. So tennis ball is going to make a movement, uh, downgrading the dice due to the snow and ice. Uh, still gets two successes. So he's able to go six inches. So tennis ball is going to go four and two. It's coming up here. Still has line of sight there, but more importantly, getting some line of sight up on this, this criminal up here. So now he's going to shoot that lawyer who's trying to run. One, two, three, four, and upgrading one dice for being well-rounded and gets one, two, three, four successes. So giving him one more momentum, putting him up to five momentum. Uh, exceeding the criminal's defense by three. So it's three bonus damage, one, two, three bonus damage, doing two damage normally. And that is only one success. So the criminal gets away with only taking one wound. Okay, so we have two cowardly and one typical demeanor. So let's look at the cowardlies first. There are two. So the flee or charge. So the sneaky thief, once they've hidden, they have to hide for three turns. Um, next, the other, the cowardly lawyer is, we said is doing a two, which is seeking cover or hiding. Let's see what you're choosing to do. You just got shot at, sir. And you're doing a seven, which is hiding. Sensible choice. And then the pistol packing hoodlum is the typical demeanor. Typical is a two, I'm going to shoot. Uh, a range on the pistol, I believe, is 10 inches. Pistol. Oh, that's the lawyer. Oh, I couldn't find it. Yeah, the pistol range is 10 inches. So, not in range of anybody. So, he's just going to move up. Or they seek cover. So, this guy is just going to come up into here. Move a little closer into sneaking up on the last ape. 
And finally, poor Natalia stands up with only two wounds remaining. Ooh. Okay, move the turn marker down. This could be the last round. We have only one more control card here to, to pull up. So this is going to Glock Roach. But starting the round, uh, Tennis Ball has five momentum, 44 points. Elasta Ape has one momentum, 44 points. And Glock Roach has four momentum and 46 points. Very close game. Let's see what the control card says. Oh, first off, need to roll for that snow and ice. And it's cocked. Four. Four is ice still around. Next up. So, no event cards, placing three crims. We have three crims. We have a sneaky thief, a crooked lawyer, and a pistol packing hoodlum. So we don't need any more crims. There's no event cards, so that's all we care about. Uh, we also care about the fact that the game is going to end on a three plus. So very likely to end after this turn, which would mean that Glockroach is in prime position here to hold on to his lead. So let's just get on to Glockroach. If, if Glockroach is able to take down Natalia here, then we're just gonna call the game at that point because there's really nothing else to do. So Natalia is getting up, back of the head, execution style. Here comes Glockroach. Only two wounds left on Natalia. What can Glockroach do to her? So he is going to... I think he's going to go with some flair on the first shot here. He's going to go with the bug bomb. Rolling five dice, needing sixes. Let me just angle them in here for the roll. And we got the two hits we needed. So nothing is downgraded. It's one damage on this. So it's at one damage, so she's choking on the poison at one, which is actually maybe good because now when he does the glockenspiel here, two, three, four, five, hitting on fours, maybe he can get some extra damage to take her out in style. And he has four momentum, so he's going to reroll the two misses. Might as well. And that's all hits. So five hits. So in excess of three, two of which are downgraded due to the armor. So in excess of three, so doing four, 2d10 and 2d8s, just needing one hit to win the game. And he got a one on the impact dice, so he's gonna reroll that with momentum for a hit. So that's two, so in excess of one, Natalia's down, he's won the game. But let's see what he gets for that. So it's uh, three pizzazz plus one more for the uh, extra point of damage done and he gets I'll reroll that one with this momentum so one two three more points so he did three points of damage is nine points plus three more is 12 taking him to a grand total of 58 points and I don't know that anybody could even touch him there let's just like I said everybody's just probably just gonna be you know like shuffling their feet wondering what to do for the turn does the turn end Does the turn end? Yes, the turn ends. So that is it. We have a winner. Glockroach has won by 58 points. Second place was, well, actually, it was second place was a tie between Tennis Ball and Elastic Ape with 44 points apiece. Let me take you to my final thoughts. So this whole new match system with the beast mode um let me just start off by saying i am a huge fan of urban manhunt i think it's a great game a lot of fun and i, I enjoy it very much this new beast mode though not so much it what it's doing is it's simply just now keep in mind this is just the play testing rules so there's, there's these are these aren't official this isn't the final draft but what I'm seeing in this right now is just simply get as close as you can to the beast and just unload everything you have into it. It's really no decision making, no... It's just get there and just daka 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 until 
and then you know hope that you can just do enough damage each turn to score as much points as you can because the problem is that there's only one way to score points and that's through the beast so what is the point of going after crims what is the point of moving away once you've got the beast pinned down but so also which once you start getting the beast down then the beast is going to spend its whole turn just getting back up again just to get knocked back down again on the next hunter's turn it's just this endless cycle of repetition and it's just comes down to dice rolling. It's just it's just chucking dice and there's no careful planning, movements, thoughts, strategies, anything. So I was thinking about what might rectify this and uh, the, the only thing I could really come up with is maybe um, if you had the number of beasts is equal to number of hunters minus one. You know, I, I, cause I can imagine playing this mission with like four hunters. I, it would just be ridiculous. Uh, but if you did number of hunters minus one, so in this case, with this game I was playing here, if we had two beasts on the table, and then knowing, okay, well, my turn is, you know, trying to position yourself in a spot where maybe you can get in between the two beasts, and then it's not always just sitting around and just killing one beast, and it's not going to hurt you because it's just spending his whole turn getting up. Uh, so if there was a second beast, and suddenly it becomes more dangerous, that's that's a different story. And that might be something worth considering. Uh, because that's the other thing, too. I mean, like, sure, I had two bad rolls with it. The, the, the beast rolled two ones and had two chances to activate. Three chances to activate. First time it actually activated, it moved towards tennis ball. The second, third time, it just rolled ones and it just sat around drooling. It was, it was just kind of did nothing. So even if it had done something i mean if it had charged on the second time it would have got closer to tennis ball uh, further away from the others i mean it, i guess there could have been a little bit more but really still it's just it's it's the whole name of the game is just get to the beast and just shoot it down it's, it's your only source of points so yeah there needs to be more to it there needs to be more than one source of points would be my my strong recommendation on this one because when there's only one then once you've got it what's the point of moving and you saw a turn after turn where hunters were just like oh beast is down okay well skip wait till the next turn so yeah i'm not just going to keep repeating myself the there just seem, simply needs with, with only one source of points the game becomes just hunting that down and just camping around it so uh, the, the game needs more decision making the game needs more uh choices to be made and it's just this one i mean the, the criminals in there add some randomness that they could be attacking you may not be attacking you there could be some things hurting you but overall like you saw in this it was just it wasn't very exciting so i would like to see more to it than just that so take that as you will if you have different thoughts than me or if you agree with me whatever your thoughts are please just leave those messages in the comment section below love to hear from the viewers i'd love to see what your thoughts are on this game and whether you think that what you think might be a good way to fix it or whether you think it was fine the way it was if you think this was a great system then please again all comments are welcome in the comment section down below and if you're new to the channel then what i'm doing is i'm putting out content on a weekly basis around topics normally are topics of gamification game-based learning uh talking to mostly teachers and parents and people who are educating young children about how we can use games to help to do that things like this battle report i'm doing here are things i do occasionally uh when i have the time and motivation to do so uh, because i enjoy them but otherwise i'm doing things around helping people to become better teachers through the use of games and games of creation and using those in classroom settings and educational means if any of this sounds good to you then please do remember to hit like and subscribe down below it really does help the channel and i do appreciate it and don't forget to hit that little bell icon as well which indicates when i am putting out new content which like i said is at least on a weekly basis sometimes even more and that is going to wrap it up for today's episode until next time i'm craig thompson with your host on teaching with board games saying thanks for coming to the classroom are you coming back to school with